My name is Nanikia Mensabrampa, beginning with tonight. The hospitality industry in Kumase is experiencing a boom following the four-day burial rights of the Asantehima. Hotels are fully booked, with some having increased their rates by more than 100%. The passing away of the Asante Hema, Nana Ifia Kobi Sewa Ampim II, has been described as a great loss to the Ashanti Kingdom and the nation at large. The burial rites have attracted people from all over the country and beyond to the Mensha Palace. This has also created various opportunities for businesses. TV3's visits to some hotels in Kumasi revealed operators have been recording significant increment in sales. The chief executive officer of the Royal Lameta Hotel, Jim Fua Abibiu, said sales were poor during the 2016 electioneering period. But since Sunday, we have realized some remarkable uh, improvement or increase in the lodgements of the hotels. But from uh, the 1st of December to uh, last Saturday, it was generally low. If it continues like this, then I think it will be good. The situation was no different at Cosado's Arena Hotel. The general manager, Ivan Zafari Jan Yebwa, said sales have increased. From Sunday till this time, we've, we've had more than a hundred percent. I'll say more than a hundred percent because we, we are even shuttling people to other hotels. From the way we see things, it's, it's becoming like from now till Thursday, Friday, it's going to be more than what we are seeing now. Another hotel has also seen an increase in patronage as some clients had to be referred to nearest hotels as all rooms were fully booked. Car rental companies are also recording high patronage. The St. Michael car rentals at the Kumase Airport has had to extend working hours due to the increase in demand for its services. TV3's checks indicate sales have shot up by over 500% since Sunday. Good times to have a business in Kumasi, I must say. Let's move on to the cocoa sector where the Cocoa Industry Workers Union, CIWU, has rejected calls for investigations into the tenure of office of former Chief Executive Officer of Cocoa Board, Dr. Stephen Oponi. Addressing a news conference in Accra, the union strongly supported Dr. Oponi for transforming the cocoa industry to meet growing demands. According to the union, Dr. Kwabino Opuni transformed the industry by facilitating increases in the sale of cocoa beans on the international market. Again, the union was emphatic that Dr. Opuni signed syndicated loans which improved the operations of Cocoa Board. The group expressed worry some media reportage accused the former Cocoa Board boss and some management members of corrupt practices. The chairman of the union, Hassan Idris, described the allegations as untrue and pledged the union's support for Dr. Opuni. We are denying him. The point we're making is that it's an issue they have to answer. And then those who are making the accusation, the information they are having, we are not having it. So who am I to sit down here and defend it? The defense we're giving to Dr. Opuni, it has to do with our social partnership. We're part of management. Today is no more. And man, government have the right to appoint and disappoint. The union again rejected claims of intimidation of some members of staff of Cocoa Board by the outgoing chief executive officer. The Cocoa Industry Workers Union, however, pledged to work with the new chief executive officer when appointed. Already, the name of the general secretary of Industry and Commercial Workers Union, ICU, Solomon Kote, has come up for consideration as a new CEO of Cocoa Board. The chairman of the Cocoa Industry Workers Union, Hassan Idris, however, threatened to resign if Solomon Kote is appointed as CEO. Solomon Kote is appointed today. I'll resign today because it's not worth it. If somebody is made a chief executive, workers sometimes don't resist, but there are some workers who what who resist. And I can assure you that if the government should appoint Solomon Kote, quote me as the chief executive of Ghana Cocoa Board, I am telling you that the possibility of a resistance is there. My colleagues are here. But I'm saying to me, take it from me, I will present. 
Well, the story continues, but let's move on now to the Forex market. And uh, let's find out what really is happening. It's inevitable that the city's depreciation to its major trading currencies would definitely pass by. Uh, we've had economists projecting up to five Ghana cities. From November till now, uh, we saw some sort of stability, but the depreciation, uh, we understand, is still ongoing with the city to the dollar now standing uh, with the buying price of four Ghana cities, 23 pesos, and it will be sold to you at four Ghana cities, 23 pesos on the interbank markets, depending on which bank you decide to visit. The interesting thing and the risk of the currencies now is that uh, we have the U.S. markets having their interest rates as well as their stocks performing so well. And uh, this could be risky for foreign businesses who are here who would want to pull out, as in foreign investments, pulling out onto the U.S. market. So this is what it stands at, how much you will buy it on the interbank market. That is a city to that of the Great British Pound at five Ghana cities, 20 pesos, and a selling price of five Ghana cities, 21 pesos. That is how much it will be sold to you, depending, of course, on which bank. And the city to that of the euro, four Ghana cities, 52 pesos, and four Ghana cities, 52 pesos. Same for how much it will be sold to you. But breathing... Uh, on that particular issue, we can say that businesses who have invested in Ghanaian companies or organizations will not be able to move out. So it's just a risk factor that we are weighing. We're still looking at what will happen on the market and giving you more. We move on to that headline story on business and cultivation of yam, uh, that is white yams or pona, has been introduced to farmers at Isnafu North in the Bruno Ahafu region. Farmers in that area who cultivate or cultivated cocoa have for years registered, resisted growing the crop claiming it will not do well. The project by Alliances for Action Farming is to provide farmers with another stream of income apart from what they earn from cocoa. More 100 farmers were introduced to the cultivation of the new yam variety. The pilot stage of the project saw the farmers grouped in fives to embark on cultivation of puna and other white yam varieties. Farms are located at Peposo, Ijuma Abufrim, and Mentumi, all in the Sunafu North Municipality. The project under the Alliances for Action Farming is being supported by Fair Trade, a global trade organization. The area is not known for the cultivation of yams, and so farmers were not enthused about going into yam cultivation. Farmers in the area are known for cocoa, oil palm, cassava and plantain. According to the farmers, the introduction of yam variety like puna and paepa came as a surprise to them. At some of the demonstration farms, 10 tubers of yams weighed 20 kilos, far beyond what farmers expected. An average tuber of yam sells at five Ghana cities. A yams exporter, John Felix Ajay, believes the introduction of the traditional yams could help exporters since they last longer and taste better. What they are doing here is perfectly right because uh, they have organic. It's something like organic. There's no fertilizer, nothing inside. So we like it. And that one, this one, when we buy it, I hope it will last for us. A tropical roots and tuber crop scientist, Dr. Antonio Lopez Montes, explains the rationale behind the project in the area. The idea for uh, this project is to bring high quality scientific knowledge directly to farmers to contribute to improve their livelihood and guide them in a better way for development. And that will do for business tonight. My name is Nanikia.